Hello everybody, welcome to another one of whatever we're calling this. Um, I promise you, first of all, there will be some gaming content soon. I'm really doing that. I know there's been a big stint of mental health stuff lately, but just bear with me on that one. Um, with that in mind, let's have some fun and talk about suicide and self-harm. Yay. Okay. So, as always, with any of these issues, if you are affected by this, please seek somebody with better medical experience and knowledge than me who has none. Um, when we're talking about such a sensitive and delicate thing, everybody's experience of this is going to be very different. Uh, so I can only really speak for my own experiences, but I sort of feel that sharing that is probably going to be helpful in some way. So I've talked about how I had, th well, thought I had depression for a very long time, which turned out to be borderline personality disorder, etc. Along with that came a feeling of suicidal ideation, wanting to be dead. And that was, I see it's difficult to talk about these things because I wanted to say it's difficult to live with that. And it is. It might give you some faith to know that I'm sort of on the out of this. I am in no way suicidal whatsoever. I am very, very pleased that I was never suicidal enough to manage to seriously hurt myself in any way. And so I'm now in a position where I sort of laugh about it. So if you catch me smiling or laughing, I'm not, it's at me, right? It, it, it's about my own experience and how it all seems just such a long way away now and, and so utterly crazy. So for the longest time, I felt suicidal. And that led to a number of incidents, especially over the last few years. Um, it would be unfair of me to say I ever attempted suicide. But I've been brought home by the police on more than one occasion. There's your sort of middle ground. And there are lots of, of incidents I could go into detail with, but it, I don't know that that would help anybody. So what I came to realize, and I think fairly early on, no, sorry, fairly recently, uh, something I came to realize, I didn't really want to die. It didn't actually make sense that I wanted to die. You see, I knew what I was upset about. I knew what was wrong in my life that was bothering me. I knew how I felt constantly depressed, constantly sad, constantly. It, I've often described it to people as like having a blanket of sadness wrapped around you, which sounds such a tragic thing when I say it out loud again. And when I realized, rather than wanting to be dead, I wanted that feeling of sadness to stop. And killing myself was the only way I could think of at that point to make that pain stop. It wasn't that I didn't want to go on living in this world anymore. It was that I just didn't want to be in pain anymore. So as soon as I stopped being in pain, the feeling of wanting to kill myself just went away. I'm so conscious of every time I say the, the phrase kill myself and YouTube algorithms picking on me or whatever. But, you know, I didn't want to be dead. Otherwise, why would, why would I be upset about anything? Why, why, de why be depressed? You can just, if you just want to kill yourself, that's something you can try and do. Don't. Right. 
Believe me when I say, you have no idea what's around the next corner. You have no idea what tomorrow brings. And the truth is, is that really what you want? Or is this pain coming from somewhere? All too often we hear the phrase, I want to die, I want to kill myself. And the response is never, why? Why do you want to do that? We don't even really think about it ourselves. Maybe to a certain extent, maybe something has happened to put you in a state of despair. Say, perhaps a lost job. Something like that. Is that really the thing that's upsetting you or is it a deeper level thing? You're not upset about a job, you're upset about a loss of money, a loss of security, all the things that that brings with it, all of these underlying fears. This is a terrible example. I'm just trying to give you an example of something where you might think you've got a hold of it, but you haven't. And you know you haven't because you still feel bad. And if you still feel bad, things aren't right, are they? There's still something that needs to be sorted out. The answer to making that stop is to figure out what it is and do something about it. That doesn't mean that's an easy thing to do. That It's all well and good me sitting here in my chair saying, well, do something about it, right? That's easier said than done. But what is important, what you should take away is that, again, it's a temporary thing. You don't have to feel like this. And the way to stop feeling like it is to figure out why. All of these things, all of these problems, these markers, these criteria that we suffer through with BPD, really, I have found that the answer to dealing with all of the ones that I've dealt with has been to ask why. Why do I feel like that? Why am I doing this? Why am I thinking that? And getting to the root cause, the very bottom of everything. And then doing something about that. Like weeding, that would have been a better example. There you go. There were some dark times. I've met the Bradford crisis team on a number of occasions. Ideally, the best number is never. But those dark times have, have gone away. And they're the ones that I fear coming back the least. Because really just takes asking why and getting to the root cause of that problem. Because the solution is never to do something drastic to yourself, right? And this is before we get into the technicalities of, this is not an easy thing to do. You don't want to try to do this. This is not, I, look, if you are currently feeling suicidal, then seriously seek seek help. And I don't mean that in a get help you crazy loon kind of way. I mean, there are people you can call. And talking about this and analyzing it and getting to the root of that problem is actually fairly straightforward. And just talking to anyone, especially when you're at the lowest steps, it, it, it's very difficult to be at the absolute lowest when you're not on your own. Um, so I just wanted to sort of, I, I understand that there's potential with this, this disorder for people to be hurting themselves. And I don't want that to happen to any of you, obviously. It 
I'm very glad it didn't happen to me. And I sort of, I don't know, it, it's difficult to give advice over. Well, what have I spent the last 10 minutes doing? You see, I don't edit jump cuts and things like that into this. You get to see me pause. I'll stop talking for now because I've talked enough and I'm only going to say more things that are going to make YouTube, YouTube angry. Um, thanks for commenting on previous video, guys. I do appreciate it. If you want to comment on this one, please do. I'd be interested to know other experiences. You know, it's uh, a difficult thing to go through. And I don't have much experience with all of it. I mean, we talked about the suicide side of it. The, the marker is suicidal ideation and self-harm. I've never self-harmed. Um, and so I don't think that's something I really should talk about. I only know about that what anybody would know about that. The, the other thing is something I've personally gone through a lot. And I, hope that, I hope that none of you are going through it. And if you are going through it, Believe me, it's a going through. It's not a staying, right? Get out of this in a, in a good and proper way, not in a bad way, okay? It's all very serious, isn't it? Well, it's a serious thing. Shut up, Rach. Anyway, you all take care, and I'll see you on another video. Bye-bye.